Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a Korean drama film called Old Boy. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1988, a middle-aged man named Oh Dae Su was arrested for public intoxication and disorderly conduct on the night of his daughter's birthday. After his friend, Yo Hwan, bails him out, he calls his daughter on the phone to tell her to wait for him. However, before he could go home, he suddenly disappears, leaving behind the present for his daughter. Dae Su soon finds himself locked up in a hotel room with no windows, not knowing who his captors were or why he was abducted. He is constantly fed through a trapdoor, but he is also being gassed almost on a regular basis whenever his captors cut his hair, change his clothes or clean up his room. The only way Dae Su can learn about the outside world was through the TV. One day, he finds out that his wife, Kim Jae-yoon, had been killed. His blood and fingerprints were found at the crime scene, so he has become the prime suspect. By this time, Dae Su has started suffering from hallucinations. As months and years pass, he continues to descend into madness and tries to take his own life several times, but his captors revive him each time. Frustrated by his situation, Dae Su starts keeping a journal and writes down the names of people who might have a grudge against him. He also starts training himself to fight in the hopes that he could use it against his captor someday. After about six years, he had begun to dig a hole through the wall using only a metal chopstick. He keeps removing a few bricks from the wall over the years until he can hold out his hand and feel the rain outside. Dae Su starts planning his escape and covers the hole with the bed, but before he could completely hide it, he is knocked unconscious by the sleeping gas. As he lay on the bed, a woman arrives in his room and hypnotizes him. After 15 years in captivity, he emerges from a luggage and finds himself outdoors wearing a brand new suit and a watch. After adjusting to the light, he sees his journals inside the luggage. He looks around and sees another man sitting on the ledge. Holding his pet dog, the man tells Dae Su not to stop him from jumping off the building. Seeing another human being for the first time, Dae Su takes the man's hand and holds it against his face. As Dae Su continues to relish his freedom, the man asks him, even though I'm no better than a beast, don't I have the right to live? Dae Su just smiles and repeats the question. As the man was about to fall backward, Dae Su grabs him by his necktie. He tells the man to listen to his story first before killing himself. After telling his story, Dae Su walks away and grabs his journals. He completely ignores the man who was hoping to reveal the reason why he wanted to die. As Dae Su leaves the building, the man falls to his death on top of a car. Dae Su starts contemplating his next move while walking around the city. He avoids contacting his relatives or friends, knowing that he is still a suspect for the murder of his wife. When he comes across a group of young men on the streets, he tries out his fighting skills against them. Using only his fists, he successfully beats them up and continues wandering through the city. While he was sitting in front of a seafood restaurant, a homeless man hands him a cell phone and a wallet full of money. The homeless man tells Dae Su to avoid asking him any questions because he doesn't know anything. After inspecting the wallet, Dae Su enters a sushi bar and asks the server to bring him something alive to eat. Dae Su later recognizes the server as one of the contestants in a cooking competition on TV. When his phone starts ringing, he answers immediately and asks who's calling. The man on the other end taunts Dae Su by asking if he liked his new suit. Dae Su demanded to know why he was incarcerated and starts guessing who was behind the abduction. The man on the phone says that his identity is not that important. He tells Dae Su to reflect on his past to find out why he was locked up. The mysterious voice went on to ask Dae Su to find him quickly and hangs up. As Dae Su puts down the phone, the server brings him a live octopus, as he requested. She asks Dae Su if she should slice it up, but he just grabs it and starts devouring it. He collapses as soon as he finishes his meal. When he wakes up, he finds himself in the server's apartment recovering from a fever. The server tells him that the medicine she gave him was quite effective. While walking toward the bathroom, the server tells Dae Su that the lock is broken but warns him against following her because she has a knife. Despite the warning, Dae Su still goes inside the toilet and forces himself on her. The server thwarts his attempt by hitting him on the head with the butt of the knife. Dae Su prepares to leave the apartment, but the server stops him. She introduces herself as Mito and tells him that she is also interested in getting intimate with him, but she won't do it until she's ready. Dae Su soon decides to look for his estranged daughter with Mito's help. They find out that a couple from Sweden had adopted his daughter. Dae Su gives up on contacting his daughter and goes on a quest to find the man who abducted him instead. One day, Mito receives an online message from a man using the ID Evergreen, asking her about the Count of Monte Cristo. When Dae Su comes closer to investigate, Evergreen asks him how he's doing in the bigger prison. 
Mito tells him that she has been chatting with Evergreen for some time to talk about sushi. Daesu thinks that he can't trust Mito because of her online relationship with Evergreen, so he tries to find his captors on his own. He soon discovers the restaurant that delivers the food that he had eaten while he was in captivity. He follows a delivery man to the building where he was incarcerated and attacks a guard with a hammer. He later discovers that the prison is run by a criminal organization specializing in incarcerating people for a price. Daesu tortures the man in charge of the operation by pulling out his teeth with the claws of a hammer. The man, named Mr. Park, says he never met with a client who paid for Daesu's incarceration, but he recorded the phone call. Daesu takes the recording and tries to leave the building, but a horde of men waits for him outside Park's office. Armed only with his hammer and his fists, he fights them all off. He continues to fight even as he is stabbed in the back. When Daesu finally gets out of the building, he pulls out the knife and collapses on the ground. A man on the street helps him up and puts him inside a taxi. The stranger gives the driver an address and reveals himself to be responsible for locking up Daesu by calling him out by name. Unable to do anything because of his injuries, he just looks at the man as the taxi drives off. Back at home he listens to the recording that he took from Mr. Park's office. He hears the man and Mr. Park talking about the length of incarceration and the types of drugs that they can use to medicate him if he develops schizophrenia during his captivity. When Mr. Park asks what Dae Su did to deserve a lengthy incarceration, the client tells him that Dae Su talks too much. The next day, Dae Su pays a visit to his friend, Yo Huan, to ask him if he recognizes the client's voice in the recording. Yo Huan cannot identify the client, but he helps Dae Su find Evergreen online. Evergreen taunts Dae Su further by letting him know that the statute of limitations on him has already expired. Dae Su goes back to Mito's home and starts torturing her to find out what she knows about Evergreen. As he tries to force more information out of Mito, Yo Huan calls to tell him that he had discovered Evergreen's identity. Yo Huan tells him that Evergreen's real name is Su Dia, and he lives in a building just across the street from Mito's apartment. He immediately runs to the apartment and meets Evergreen and his bodyguard, Mr. Han. Evergreen tells Dae Su that he will kill Mito in five days unless he uncovers the motive behind his incarceration. He offers to take his own life if Dae Su succeeds. Dae Su tries to attack Evergreen, but the bodyguard fends him off. Evergreen went on to tell Dae Su that he will never find out the motive if he kills him. He further reveals that he is wearing a pacemaker that he can deactivate with a push of a button if Dae Su tries to torture him. As Evergreen prepares to leave, he encourages Dae Su to seek vengeance to deal with the pain of losing his wife and child. He reminds Dae Su that he had left Mito tied up in her apartment with the door wide open. Dae Su rushes back to Mito's place after hearing her scream. When he arrives, he sees Mr. Park and his goons abusing Mito. The goons overpower Dae Su and hold him down as Mr. Park attempts to remove his teeth with a hammer. A phone call interrupts them, and Mr. Han later arrives at the apartment and offers a briefcase full of money to Mr. Park. After looking at the briefcase, he agrees to take it and leave Dae Su unharmed. Dae Su threatens to cut off Mr. Park's hand for abusing Mito. Dae Su and Mito immediately leave the apartment after the goons left. On their way to a motel, Mito sings a song to indicate that she is ready to get intimate with Dae Su. After their lovemaking, sleeping gas seeps into their room, and Evergreen goes in to leave them a package. When they opened it, they see Mr. Park's severed hand. Dae Su realizes that Evergreen has bugged them, so he goes to a shop to find the device and get rid of it. Sometime later, Dae Su and Mito stop by Yo Huan's internet cafe to learn out more about Evergreen. As Mito goes through the search results on the internet, Dae Su and Yo Huan soon realize that Evergreen was the name of their batch in their old high school. Dae Su and Mito go to the school to look at the yearbook for the class of 79. He learns that Evergreen was a fellow student named Lee Wujin. Dae Su calls Yo Huan to ask if he knows anything about Wujin. Yo Huan says he doesn't recognize the name. Dae Su starts asking Yo Huan about a female student named Su Ah. Yo Huan tells Dae Su that she died after he transferred to another school. When Dae Su asks for more details, Yo Huan tells him that Su Ah was a very promiscuous girl. Unbeknownst to them, Wu Jin is at Yo Huan's cafe during the phone call. Enraged by how Yo Huan describes Su Ah, Wu Jin kills him and reveals to Dae Su that Su Ah was his sister. Dae Su tracks down Mr. Park to ask for more details about his incarceration. Due to the loss of his hand, Mr. Park willingly tells Dae Su that he had drugged the water to make him more susceptible to hypnosis. He also agrees to keep Mito safe while Dae Su goes on to find Wu Jin. Another former classmate tells Dae Su that Yo Huan spread the rumors about Su Ah's promiscuity. Dae Su later recalls that he had accidentally witnessed Wu Jin and Su Ah engaging in intimate acts. 
He remembers that he had told Yo Huan about it just before he transferred to another school. Using the clues left behind by Wu Jin, Dae Su was able to pinpoint where his former captor leaves. He confronts Wu Jin and accuses him of using hypnosis to erase the memory of what he witnessed in school. Wu Jin argues that it wasn't hypnosis that made him forget about the incident. Dae Su simply forgot about it because it wasn't something that should concern him. Wu Jin reveals that the rumors about Sua getting pregnant have started to spread soon after Dae Su left the school. The gossip has gotten so bad that Sua began to believe that she was actually pregnant. Wu Jin blamed Dae Su for spreading the rumors. Dae Su accuses Wu Jin of killing his own sister because he feared people would find out about their illicit relationship. Wu Jin dismisses the accusations and starts recounting how he arranged the meeting between Dae Su and Mido with the help of a hypnotist. He shows Dae Su a photo album of his wife and child. As Dae Su flips through the album, he sees photos of the child growing up. Dae Su is horrified as he finds out that his daughter had grown up to be Mido. Enraged by what he discovered, Dae Su attacks Wu Jin, but Mr. Han stops him. Dae Su struggles to fight off Mr. Han but manages to injure him. Despite his serious injury, Mr. Han is still able to subdue Dae Su. After watching the altercation for some time, Wu Jin gets frustrated and decides to kill his own bodyguard. Wu Jin goes on to tell Dae Su that Mr. Park is still working for him. Back in Mr. Park's building, Mido is presented with a gift box and was told to open it. Dae Su tells her over the phone not to look inside and wait for him to get back. Dae Su starts begging Wu Jin not to reveal the truth to Mido. He kneels in front of Wu Jin and starts barking like a dog as a sign of his submission. Failing to make an impression on Wu Jin, he decides to cut off his own tongue. Wu Jin finally relents and tells Mr. Park to keep the gift box closed. He walks away leaves Dae Su with the remote control for his pacemaker. However, when Dae Su pushed the button, it only played an audio recording of him and Mido making love. Wu Jin walks into the elevator and starts recalling Sua's death. Wu Jin tries to save her from falling, but Sua tells him to let her go. As soon as the elevator opens, Wu Jin shoots himself in the head. Now living in a secluded countryside, Dae Su writes a letter to the hypnotist to tell his story and ask her for help. She tells Dae Su that she initially had no intention of helping him, but the last part of the letter convinced her. In the last sentence of the letter, Dae Su asks, Even though I'm no more than a beast, don't I have the right to live? The hypnotist warns Dae Su that something might go wrong and mess up his memory. Dae Su agrees to go ahead with the session anyway. She proceeds with the hypnosis and tells Dae Su that his mind will be split into two personalities. The first personality will not know the truth about Mito, while the other one is the monster who will keep the secret. The monster will start walking away in age one year with each step until he reaches 70 and dies. Later on, Dae Su wakes up alone in the snow. Mito comes over and tries to warm him up. She embraces Dae Su and tells him that she loves him. Dae Su breaks into a smile upon hearing about Mito's feelings for him, but the smile slowly turns into a look of grief and pain as they continue to embrace. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.